Alrighty, so welcome back. We're going to be doing the My Academic History section of the UC Transfer Admission Planner, which is also the UC TAC. So right here we're going to be talking about high schools, inputting all of your college classes, and then any types of gaps in your um, college career that you've had, and lastly dealing with any of the exams that you've completed. So any AP exams, IB exams, uh, if you've done TOEFL, uh, those type of exams you'll be inputting in this application as well. So first off, we're going to go ahead and add high schools. So this one you'll be adding every high school that you have attended. And with this one, you'll just click on that add a high school. You can type a portion of it. So I'm just going to go ahead and do UKIPA for right now. You'll go ahead and hit search. And it lets you know one of the high schools that's listed there. If there's not any other ones, so for instance, if I do uh, Los Angeles, you'll go ahead and hit search. And it'll let you know all of the high schools that pop up for Los Angeles. If you do not see your high school listed there, uh, you can go ahead and enter it manually by clicking that very bottom number, and you'll just have to do a little bit more information that's listed here. Okay. So for right now, though, I'm just go ahead and choose that Redlands High School. Once you end up selecting it, it'll, it'll ask you how long you have attended that school. So for most of the high schools, uh, if you have graduated after 2008, they did change their terms to start in the August, so you have a shorter summer, but then a longer winter break. So you would just go ahead and select the month that you began. This one isn't vital. It's not as important as the year is. So August or September as your choices will not hinder your admission. So you would just select the month as well as the year that you began. If you've only been at one high school for the full four years, it's really easy. All you'll need to do is just remember what your graduation year is and then subtract four from that. For this instance, I say 2006, I subtract four, which means that I started in 2002. Most of the high schools end in June. There are some that end in May, but as I said before, it's the year that's more important, the month not as much. So you'll select the month and the year that you attended, um, that you first began attending that high school and when you ended um, your high school tenure. With your current or most recent school, you're gonna go ahead and select no because you are a transfer student, so your most current school is a community college. With what type of school it is, if you select it from the list, this option should automatically populate. If it does not, then go ahead and choose if it's a public or a private school. With Redlands High School, it is a public high school, so that one should automatically be selected. If it is not, then go ahead and make sure that you do select the appropriate uh, type of school. Did you or will you receive a high school diploma or equivalent? You're gonna go ahead and select yes or no. If you select yes, it will give you the different types of options of that specific type of diploma or certificate or GED. If you did not receive one, it will not hinder your admission in any way. You can just go ahead and select no. And for that last one, you're gonna just put your date of your high school graduation. Uh, same thing as I said here, if your end date is your graduation date, it should be the same. If you ended up finishing high school, maybe a semester before, uh, say for instance, you ended in December, your graduations should still happen in June since graduations tend to only happen once a year. You'll go ahead and hit save. And just know that you don't have to input any of the high school classes or courses in this section. All you're doing is just letting them know where you went to high school and if you've been to multiple high schools. For the colleges and the universities, these are going to be dealing with all the colleges that you have attended, that you are currently attending, and if you're planning on attending a college maybe in the spring semester to complete any general education courses or maybe any major prep courses, you would definitely include that as well. The only ones that you don't need to attend are the UCs or any CSUs that you are planning to transfer to. These are the colleges and universities that you have or currently are attending prior to transferring to the four year. So you would just do the same thing by adding a school. It's gonna be asking if it's some, a school that is um, a Cal State, a, a UC, or a community college. If it is, you're just gonna go ahead and select yes, and it'll break up each of these sections. So you'll have California Community Colleges to choose from. If you scroll down a little bit more, it'll show you the Cal States or the CSUs, and then a little bit further, you'll show, that'll show the UC campuses as well. So go ahead and select whichever campus. For right now, I'm just gonna choose College of San Mateo. And for this one, it's important to have unofficial transcripts on hand. So for instance, if you have it with um, just with Crafton, you can go onto your web advisor and then go to the unofficial transcripts link and you'll be able to pull up your unofficial transcripts. 
For any of the other colleges that you have attended, I would do the same route by going to that college's website, going into the portal, and then pulling the unofficial transcripts so that way you can look at your transcripts while you're inputting this information. Because it's very important to note that whatever is on your transcript from those colleges, it needs to be exactly replicated into this, pro into this application. There cannot be any indiscrepancies. It needs to look exactly how it is on your transcripts. So for this one, with the month that started, you're gonna look at the very first time that you attended at that college. So say for instance, you started in the spring semester, so you'll choose January. Maybe you started in uh, 2008, and you only went there for just a semester. So you would just say the end of that semester was May, and then the year 2008. And with this being your most recent or current school, obviously it's not, so you'll just go ahead and select no. It should already, um, display what type of school it is after you choose from the drop-down, but if it does not, just make sure that you do choose that option. And if you've done any out-of-state universities, when you select no, you'll just have to manually type in that information. Does the school run on semester or quarter? Most of the community colleges do run on a semester system, so you'll select semester. And then if you will, or if you have earned a degree from that school, you can select yes or no. If you select yes, it gives you the option for the type of degree. The only ones that you're looking at right now for the community colleges are your um, associate for transfer, which is an AAT or an AST, or an associates, which is an AA or an AS. If you're unsure about this section, I would definitely recommend looking at your Starfish in the Crafton Hills um, homepage, or even reaching out to a counselor to check to see what type of degree you are receiving or if you have received a degree, it should be listed on your unofficial transcripts. So you'll just go ahead and select that and then put down the degree that you've got your uh, transfer degree or your associate's degree. If you will be earning it in the near future, one thing to note is that if you're getting it for the fall semester, you'll put the last month of the fall semester and then the year, which is 2020. If you're getting it in the spring semester, it'll be the last month of the spring, which will be May 2021. And then if you've gotten it, or if you will be getting it in the summer semester, you'll be choosing August and then keeping it as 2021. Okay. So right now I'm just going to go ahead and cancel out of this because I already have the two colleges that I want to put in there. So for this one, Crafton is my current college because I'm going to be finishing up at Crafton in the spring semester. But I do put down here that I, I attended uh, one class at Marina Valley College for one semester for that fall semester. For this one, if you have a gap in your um, academic career between high school graduation and college, then you would just say yes, and it gives you the opportunity to explain why. Maybe you were working full time, maybe you wanted to just have a break, maybe you were taking care of family, whatever the reason may be, they just want to see what was the cause for the gap in the academic history. Just as I mentioned before with the high school, this is not going to hinder your admission in any way. This is just to let them know what your um, plans were, what you ended up doing before you got into college, just to see what you yourself are doing and who you are. And the last question of this one is at the time of transfer, will you be a U.S. citizen or a permanent resident? Go ahead and select yes or no as it pertains to you. And then go ahead and hit save. You do want to make sure that you include all the colleges here because once you get into the coursework section, if you have not included the colleges, they will not pop up for the coursework. And what I mean by that is that when you click on coursework, when you start to add in your classes, um, I'll go ahead and say um, add a course for this term, it'll only put down the colleges that you put in on that school's attended. So you do need to make sure that you put every single school there. Right here, it has the um, gap uh, question again. So if you did have that high school gap um, between high school and uh, for your first term of college, you'll go ahead and just reiterate what you put down in the previous section. And then you'll be able to start with your first term. So you'll be um, hitting that add a course. You'll make sure to select the term, which is your first term. And what I recommend is doing Crafton first. So just doing the first college that you have attended, making sure that you've input all the classes here first. And then if you have attended any other colleges, then you'll input those later. But for right now, just focus on Crafton. Uh, you'll choose the first term, which my first term was that fall 2016. I'm going to go ahead and select the campus. And then this is where you'll be inputting your classes. So for instance, I'll go ahead and put math for right now. You're, all you need to do for this is just type the course subject. And when you hit search, 
it'll give you the list of all the transferable math courses that the UC takes. You're going to see that, of course, there are some classes that are not on here. So for instance, with math, if you've done math 095, math 080, um, any of those classes that are below 100, it's not going to be listed here because it is not transferable. However, you still need to include those classes. Even if they are non-transferable classes, you need to include these in your coursework because it needs to look exactly how it is on your transcript. And the same goes if you ended up failing a class, if you withdrew from a class, if you repeated a class, if you got academic renewal, all of those scenarios, you will be inputting them as it shows on your transcript. The only ones that you will not in this section, but at a later time, is gonna be any type of AP classes or AP tests that you uh, passed, that you got credit for. For those AP ones, you'll be putting them in the exam section of this. So you will not be putting it in the coursework. So if you do not see your class, even Math 103, for instance, with trigonometry, it's not a UC transferable class. It is a Cal State transferable, but it is not a UC transferable. You would just go ahead right here where it says my course is not listed here, add it now. Click on that, and then you'll just have to manually type in the course as you see on your transcript. So for the subject, you're just doing the actual uh, word. For the course number, I'll put 090. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head, so I'm just going to say that the title is Intermediate Algebra, but you'll write it down as it shows on your transcripts. And for this one, since this is in the past, I've already completed this course, so I'm not going to worry about the in progress or the planned. In progress would be for any classes that you're taking this semester, and for the planned, it'll be any classes that you're planning for the spring or the summer semester. And so since I've already completed it, I passed with flying colors, and you'll see that some of the classes that are not transferable that show on your transcripts, it'll show it as zero units. However, if I were to just put in zero units, it'll go ahead and show it. However, what we recommend is not to put it as zero units, is to put it down as the units that it shows underneath that course title where it says uh, not degree applicable, but it's four units or three units or 2.5. We recommend to put that information in there. If you ended up failing a course, but you repeated it at a later time, you'll see in the system that when you put down the first time you took it, you did not get a, um, a passing grade, but it shows that, oh, hey, you repeated it in spring 2017. And that's because when I went to the spring semester, I inputted History 101 again with my passing grade, and the system automatically picked it up that it was a repeated course. So you're not going to be putting it as an R or as an RP. You'll just put it as the actual letter grade, and the system will take care of it for you. Okay. If you ended up withdrawing from a course, okay, so for instance, with this one, with the College Japanese, if you click on that, I put it down with a W saying that I withdrew from the course. A W does not affect you in any way. Uh, with this one, it's just letting them know that you withdrew past the withdrawal date, but it will not affect your GPA or your admission into the UCs. So I'm just gonna go ahead and continue to update that. It'll make sure that it's saved in there and we're all good to go. The other one that I wanna go ahead and show is the academic renewal. So if you have been awarded academic renewal, on your transcripts, it'll say right where the course is with a whole bunch of asterisks. It'll say academic renewal in bold. So if you were awarded academic renewal and it shows on your transcripts, you'll want to make sure to put that as the letter grade. If you ha have not been awarded academic renewal, but you have submitted the application for academic renewal, you still need to put down the letter grade that you have and you can put down in the additional comments section of the UC application, letting them know that you submitted your academic renewal application to admissions and records, and you're just waiting for it to be processed and approved. But you do not want to put down that you have been awarded it just because you never know what happens. Maybe they, you might be denied or something comes up that makes it so that way you don't get the academic renewal awarded onto your transcripts. So you don't want to be accidentally um, not telling the truth on the transcripts because the UCs will see that. They'll see that there isn't an academic renewal awarded there and it'll show that it's not um, what's listed on the application. So that's going to show the indiscrepancies with it. So make sure that you are just repeating how it is on your transcripts. 
If you had a gap in between semesters, it'll show that there is a gap in education, and then you'll just explain again why there was that gap in education. Maybe you wanted to take a break, maybe you went on vacation, maybe you did study abroad or what have you. You can include that information right here. And for your fall semester, as I said, you'll be choosing um, in progress, um, so it'll show up as an IP for your grade. And for the courses that you have planned in the spring, you're going to choose planned, and it'll show up as PL. A couple things to note with this area, if there are any changes, so say for instance, you end up putting in your fall grades or your fall classes, and um, it is the end of November and you withdraw, you can still go ahead and change this. Uh, if you end up having your spring classes listed here and then there is a complete 180 and you change all of your planned spring classes, that is completely fine as well. If you end up looking at our UC application videos, we end up explaining that in there as well. Just know that with the UC application, you'll be able to update your fall grades as well as your spring planned courses um, in the January update. So they understand that everything doesn't go as planned, so they are a little bit more lenient with that. And I do say lenient in the sense that they understand that things may change, but you do want to make sure that you still are completing that 60 transferable units, that you are completing your seven course pattern, which is those two English classes, your English 101, English 102, your college level math, and then four different classes in two different subject areas for general education. So you do want to make sure you have that as well as um, completing with a 2.4 or higher. Once you input all of your coursework, it'll let you know how many units you have for a semester and also your overall GPA that they're looking at. And this is what I meant by the seven course pattern is the UC eligibility pattern. You have your two English classes listed right here, college level math. And then for these, these are the different types of subject areas where you'll choose two classes in two of the general areas. So for instance, arts and humanities, you would choose two general education courses physical and biological sciences, you can choose two there. Or it can be a three-in-one scenario. And you just need to make sure that you um, complete these with a C or better. So everything is looking all good for my coursework. I've done all the time of inputting it. So I'm just going to scroll to the very top and select exams. And this is the last portion of the My Academic History section and the last portion of this video. So if you ended up um, doing any type of AP exams or any IB exams, TOEFL, any of that, you're just going to go ahead and hit that add an exam. And for this one, I'm just going to go ahead and do Spanish. Um, so I'm just going to put the four letter span, hit search, and it'll list all the AP classes or AP tests for Spanish. And for this one, I did Spanish literature and culture, so I'll go ahead and select that. The exam date, most of the time it happened in April or May. That doesn't matter as much as the year. So for this one, I'm going to say I did it my sophomore year, which my sophomore year was 2004. And then you'll put down your exam score. So even if you did not pass with a three or higher, you'll still want to include this because you'll have to send over your AP exam transcript to the four-year university. And with that one, you get that from College Board. So you'll go on to College Board, and that's where you'll request your AP scores to be sent to the CSUs and UCs that you are transferring to. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just hit cancel with this. If you did take an English class or maybe or an AP English um, exam or a math exam and you did have a passing score, you did get credit for it, just know that they will end up counting this not only for your um, units completed, but also in this section right here for the eligibility pattern. And as you can see, since I passed AP English Lang um, and I also did AP Spanish, this fulfills the one of the English requirements and this one fulfills one of the general education requirements. So this will pull the information for you and give you the credit as you see um, that you are awarded on your transcripts for the community college. All right, so since we're done with this, the next video is the UC TAG submission. It's a pretty quick video, so go ahead and just close out of this one and then go on to the next one.